Hey, what's up guys? I'm back with another video. And today we are going to showcase and set up Outline. Now, if you haven't heard about Outline, go out over to getoutline.com and immediately see how much this is a Notion clone. So in short, I like to, I have to take notes during my engagements. A lot of people use different note-taking apps. Some use Sherry Tree, which is old school. Some maybe move to Obsidian, and I'll trust the sake, put out a lot of great blog posts about Obsidian, which you can use. But I've always wanted some sort of free and open source version that I could also host on-prem as an alternative to Notion, which is another note-taking app. Outline is pretty much, in my mind, one of the absolute best note-taking apps out there. It's online, it's live meeting, you could easily collaborate like this picture shows basically with multiple people at the same time and see their live edits. It supports Markdown, it has a great API, it has great integrations. Notion is hosted by a company. So here comes Outline, which is essentially just like an on-prem, straight up clone of Notion, which I've been using for a year plus now. And I have to say, I'm rather impressed with it. The software, the technology behind it is decent, it's pretty fast. Also, it has some really good documentation. So if you do fuck up, you can check the docs or it's, it's easy to get started with at least. So I want to showcase Outline and we're going to set this up using Docker and we're going to solve some, you know, HTTPS pain by using ngrok, which is pretty cool. So the first thing we need to do, we are going to install this on our Kali VM. You would probably want to set this up on a dedicated server somewhere or if you have like a machine that you use for Docker containers, use that. But for this demo, I'm just going to set it up on my Kali machine. So the docs that you want to look at are, I'm going to link them in the description. Outline has a dedicated Docker documentation guide on how to get up and running with a simple Docker compose file and some environmental variables in a dedicated file. We are going to use this template, but we're going to deviate somewhat from it. So before we dive into that, we need to install Docker, which on Kali is called docker.io, I believe. Pretty sure should come pre in one of the Kali repositories. And come on. <sighs> yeah, there we go. And this should give us access to the Docker utility set on this machine. There is one more step that we want to do. We want to add ourselves to the Docker group so we don't have to use sudo all the time. It's going to be this command right here. I'm also going to put that in the description. And now we should be able to do Docker info without having to do sudo. Oh, actually, we have to log in or log out and log back in after you run that command in order for a thing to take effect. Wait, wait. Oh, okay. It's back. It's back. Okay. So let's do Docker info and we should be able to see that it's running now. Great. Okay. So now we are going to create a directory called outline. Let's move into it. Let's create two documents here. So the first one is going to be docker-compose.yaml, yml. And in that, we are going to put that Docker Compose template that I just showed you guys. So this is where we are going to store all our configurations or our sort of sensitive secrets and whatnot. Uh, so for that sample, head over to their GitHub repo and then click on raw to get this thing copied, put it back and there we go. So there's quite a few things that we have to change and set up with this. I'll do the Docker Compose modifications first. So if you haven't played with Docker before, I'm not going to spend too much time like doing an introduction for it, but Docker, in at least my mind, is a really easy way to spin up dependable infrastructure that re re requires a really specific set of dependencies to run, right? So in Python, we have different Python virtual environments, which hoses different combinations of packages with different versions to make sure our Python tools work correctly. Docker is kind of like the same thing where we define sort of different services and then they pull their baseline sort of image, which is a, a small Linux image with the configuration that's needed to run this specific set of software. Within the services in this Docker compose file, we're going to outline it which is going to pull an image from docker.getoutline.com. And then that image is going to have the actual outline source code that is required for the app to run. Then we can just specify some parameters, some environment variables, some volumes and some other stuff in that specific sort of service tag within the Docker Compose file. And then that will run. And then we have a couple of other services that outline needs. So we have Redis, we have Postgres for the database opposite to store all our stuff. And then we have HTTPS portal 
So the thing here that you need to be aware of is that outline by default in this Docker Compose file is going to run on port 3000 HTTP. Outline itself, the software, is not going to have anything to do with HTTPS. It's not going to handle certificates at all. It's just going to be a plain HTTP port 3000. So in order to expose it with HTTPS certificate, and in order for these single sign-on providers that we're going to be using later to actually work, we need to have a valid HTTPS certificate. So my hack or my approach to this is just to use ngrok. So if you haven't heard about ngrok before, it's a dev-friendly way to spin up endpoints that are exposed to the world with HTTP certificates without having to do any of the actual labor for it. So if you're a developer and you create a lot of backend APIs on a data basis and you want to expose that to your developing buddy in another country or whatever, you could use ngrok and you can expose local port 3000 as an HTTP port, HTTPS port with an ngrok free domain and a pre-built certificate and they can just use that. So it's really friendly. In order to move on, you need to create an ngrok account and log into it. And then we're going to be using our one free static domain with this setup. There we go. I am now logged into ngrok. And as I said, ngrok is free. There's a pretty fine line between what you can use here for free and before it's demanding you to pay or be a part of its paid subscription model. But one thing you can do for free is that you can get one domain with HTTPS certificate that is static, which means that it doesn't change every time you want to use it. So create a domain. There we go. We got our crow, crow selected poorly, ngrok-free.app.com. Sorry, .app, which is the URL that we are going to be exposing our outline instance onto the world using. So we have that. That's great. We also need to change a couple of other things. I'm just going to take note of that domain here on, on the side. And then we also need to get our off keys, which we actually need to provide the Docker Compose file in order to to expose that URL. And don't you worry, I will be rotating the keys after this video. So you don't, don't try or there's no point in trying <laughs> using this key. Okay, so essentially, if you go back into the Docker Compose file, we are going to delete this entire section that's called HTTPS portal. Actually, that's not entirely true. We are going to delete volume. We're going to delete health checks. And then environment, we are pretty much going to delete. We only need one environment variable defined here which is going to be called ngref, uh, ngrok auth token. And then you're going to have to provide the token in that. So it's going to look a bit like this. It's going to be ngrok auth token. And then in this, we are going to put our token that we just grabbed. Like this. And then we're going to rename this to HTTPS ngrok because it's no longer HTTPS portal. We're going to remove HTTPS portal data from volumes because we removed that. We don't need it. And then we are going to add some commands and remove those ports as well, because we don't need it. We just need to keep the links to outline. We don't need the docker.end. Obviously, the image, in, image URL needs to change. That's going to be ngrok slash ngrok uh, latest. And then we're going to add something called command. And then we are going to insert a few, quite a few commands here, actually. So the first command, or the, so, sort of right now, what we're doing is that we're telling that image sort of a startup arguments, what we want it to do. So we want it to host HTTP. We want it to internally host from our outlined Docker container on port 3000. And we want it to host using our static URL, which we need to tell it to do, or else it's going to generate a random one. And then in here, we're going to put our URL. So that's going to be crowd selected poly whatever ever with HTTPS info. There we go. So that's pretty much it for the ngrok section of it. We're pulling the latest ngrok image. We're giving it these set of commands that will tell it that once it starts up, we want it to serve whatever is on the local outline service within this Docker Compose file on port 3000 out using this HTTPS URL and that will have the certificates pre-signed and everything. So you don't need to worry about it. This is done now. We can just close it up and leave it. Now we need to move into the docker.n file. This needs a bit more configuration. So first up, the URL. This needs to be the ngork, ngrok. I actually don't know if I'm pronouncing that correct. I'm probably not. I'm sorry. So need to define that URL that we got from ngrok. We should also, I think we should do it for the CDN URL as well, just in case. And then we're going to generate these two secret values, which it kindly provides us the command to do from Linux systems. I'm just going to open a new tab here, run this command two times, and then copy these. I'm assuming these are used to derive some sort of key for some sort of encryption or 
whatever, probably related to security somehow, right? And then after that, here we go. And then there's this thing here as well. We need to uncomment, which is PG SSL mode disabled. This should be fine as long as we're running these services on the same machine and we're not like doing it across the internet or whatever. So, I mean, if this machine gets compromised, then we're fucked anyhow. That's fine. There's a tons of other settings you can set here. Like if you if you don't want, so Outline has support to upload files within the document center you are taking notes in. If you want those files to be stored in an AWS bucket instead of locally within the Docker instance, then you can set that up here. But the one thing we are interested in now is essentially this SSO stuff. So Outline itself does not have anything to do with authentication. In order to authenticate and get access to Outline, you have to use a single sign-on provider from one of these services. So you could either use Slack, Google, Azure, Discord, or you can set up your own OpenID, OpenID local provider following the OID spec. We are going to be using Azure because it's quite easy and pretty straightforward. If you want to use any of the other ones, they provide the documentation straight in here. Again, great documentation. Let's open that link and just follow this, these steps then. I'm going to be logging into sort of a test Azure environment that I have. So give me a second while I do that. Once you're logged into the Azure portal, go up and search for app registration. Then click new registration. We're going to call it outline temp demo. We're going to select accounts in this organization only. And for the redirect our platform, we're going to pick a web and then going to use the ngork, ngrok, wow, uh, URL. However, you need to add something specifically here in order for so once you log in through this app registration through Microsoft, it's going to redirect you back to our outline instance with a code query parameter. And in that code query parameter is going to be what outline needs to authenticate us. So we need to redirect back to a very specific endpoint, which is noted here in the documentation step that we just opened up. So let's use that. I need that final slash. There we go. And then click register. And then we are going to go down to manage. I think it's API permissions. We're going to click add a permission. We're going to click Microsoft Graph API once it pops up here. There we go. And then delegate permissions. And then we're going to pick out email, offline access, and profile. These are the permissions that our app registration needs to be granted on behalf of users using it in order for us to access out. Now we need to move over to certificates and secrets. Click on a new client secret and just call it temp. And you can set how long you want that to last for. Let's do six months. And then we're going to copy out the value here. Again, I'm going to nuke this app registration after the demo video. So there's no point trying to abuse this, guys. There we go. And then the app client ID is actually not the secret ID. No, no, no. That's the app registration client ID, which you can find by going over to overview and then copying out this. And then we need the Azure resource app ID. This is actually typically at least a static value. You can find it by going to manifest, scrolling down until you see a resource app ID. There we go. And if I'm not entirely mistaken here, this should be everything we need. Again, there's a bunch of integrations and settings you can go through here if you want to, but in our case, this should pretty much be it. Okay, let's try. Let me just double check the compose file again. So all that stuff we just left as normal. We don't need to play with that. We only needed to change this step. We're doing HTTP, outline, and yeah. I mean, okay, 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 let's try. So in this direction now, we can just write Docker, compose up. Really? Okay, sorry, we need to install Docker Compose. I'm going to be honest and say I was not aware. Let's, I thought that was included in Docker.io, but apparently not. So let's try again here. Docker Compose up. There we go. It's pulling the images. It's setting them up. The first time you run this, there's also going to be a predefined script that populates the needed tables and columns and stuff in the Postgres database. And there we go, it started running. So we're seeing Postgres creating the stuff we need. There we go. 
creating stuff in the database. Let's go up and see what the other services were. Okay, so there's some reliance on so I'm probably gonna wait a bit before it comes back up. Read this one, that's fine, that's up. So now, there we go. Worked on first attempt, outline is now running. It is exposed externally to the world from our computer. Hello, outline. So it wouldn't really be a, a fun like video if I if it didn't fail at least once. And the reason was that in the docker.n file, we should not set the CDN URL because we are in fact not behind of a CDN endpoint. I also noticed that we have put in HTTP and not HTTPS in our URL parameter. That will also cause some issues later on. So now we just need to restart our Docker instance here. Go into your outline instance and then continue with Microsoft. Log in using your account and then we'll be redirected back and we are now in outline. So you can now correct new collections. Let's create a collection for, you know, engagement or pen test 2025 legit core. And we can be like, yeah, sure. So I started off doing some basic unsend. Oh, sorry. That was a collection. I didn't want collection inside of this collection. We can now create something called, you know, OSINT. And then within that, okay, we ran go witness to take screenshots of all the exposed endpoints. And then we can add some screenshots. We can upload documents. We have code mappings with styling. It's, it's very much like Notion. However, it's hosted on-prem by yourself. It's open source. You can actually check out the source code and contribute, make changes. And then there's a ton of integrations you can install. These are just some of them. Also, Outline has a really good API. So if you go over to the getting started docs for Outline again, actually, let's just Google get Outline API. It has really good API documentation. And if you wanted to make some sort of, you know, I don't know, MCP, AI integrations between this and your reporting framework or whatever, you can definitely dive into that and start looking at it. So hopefully that should be everything you need to know to get up and running with Outline. Now you can easily test it before you maybe consider using it on a full-time basis and set up a dedicated server for it. So that's going to be it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you coming back and watching this video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment if you like this video. And yeah, see you all next Sunday.